Get the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. Well, I'll tell you one other piece of trivia. That is that if you want your remains uh, scattered at sea and you tell the Coast Guard that you want your remains scattered at sea, you, you actually have to fill a form out in order to do that, and, and you can't scatter the remains within a mile of the shore. So if you, if you tell the Coast Guard that you've got these cremains, all of these other things happen, and I'll just leave it at that. Are there separate charges for the medical examiner? And I'm just going to ask the related question. Can we just get a sense of what, the, what the, the, the costs are regarding the cremation versus the disposition of the body by burial? Because oftentimes that question comes up. And by the way, once again, these are often these are the charges that you'd see as kind of, they're out-of-pocket charges as far as the funeral home is concerned. They're not their charges, so they kind of vary depending on who el you know, how much these other bills are. Can you just give a sense of that? So we're talking cremation out-of-pocket expenses versus burial out-of-pocket expenses? Yeah, can you just kind of okay. talk, that, talk yeah. about that? So uh, when someone's cremated, um, w the funeral home brings the body to the crematory and coordinates with the medical examiners. When we go... When we do that, uh, we've already made arrangements with the family. Um, and one of the charges that we call a cash advance, um, a non-funeral related charge, um, we would have that, we would take care of these things on your behalf or the family's behalf. So the crematory is $250. The medical examiner is $100, uh, mandated by state law. Um, burial, different story. Oh, and, and by the way, and what is the transport, is there a transportation charge to okay, get the so, Duxbury well, right back? I yeah. mean, if our funeral home, I mean, we have uh, service charges, and what we charge is $3,095 for deaths on Nantucket uh, for cremation, um, and then the crematory fee, the medical examiner's fee, and $195 for what we call an alternative container. That is simply just a uh, a wood bottom container with a cardboard top for handling purposes, which is required by the crematory. Um, How much does that mean? For the alternative container? Yes. $195. And so once again, you want to talk to somebody, you just kind of want to get, you know, get a sense of that. But I should state, um, families have the choice of providing that container. I don't see it frequently, but they do have that option. Um, and so getting back to, to burial, yeah. um, burials, most cemeteries that I've experienced require a grave liner. Um, here on Nantucket, they do require the grave liner, um, I believe at both Prospect Hill and St. Mary's. Um, so they, they have a, a, a total charge and the, the number is casing, but I feel like it's like say $2,300 or something like that. That would be for digging the grave, installing the vault uh, and then closing the grave um, and that's just something and that's a check that we would write directly to the cemetery on your behalf and and by the way so the the the, the subtext of all of this is you are doing your kids a tremendous favor by figuring all this out before you die because imagine even in a very functional family everybody's you know feeling, you know, there, there aren't any arguments automatically, but still you just died and everybody's really depressed and they're trying to deal with family and people are flying in. They don't need to be having to figure this out, right? Even if you haven't prepaid it, if at least they all know how this is all going to work, you're just helping your family out just tremendously. Funeral plots or cemetery plot. Inevitably, someone will tell me, say, you know, Aunt Martha has a cemetery plot and there were two, you know, she had four graves in it and there were two graves left, you know, and I want to, you know, we want to use the graves and how does that work? Well, there actually is some state law on this, right? First of all, if you purchase a plot in a cemetery, um, the cemetery, whether it's public or private, is required to give you a deed. That's the word actually in the statute. But they don't say what the form of that deed is. It isn't like the deeds to real estate. So they can all make them up. 
Um, and that's part of the more general rule about cemeteries. They can all make them up. They can make up all the rules. When you own a cemetery plot, what you own is, is of course, not the land. You know, you don't own the right to mow it or the, you don't own the right to have flowers on it. You own the right to put certain kinds of remains in that cemetery plot and not for free. You only own the right to do that subject to, as was just discuss, discussed, their requirement that you might need a container, that you, there may be an opening charge uh, that may vary between weekends and weekdays. There's all kinds of stuff, right? Um, there, were, there are a few things though that are specified. If, you, if someone has bought a cemetery plot that has multiple grave sites in it while that person is alive, they can have anybody buried there that they want, right? When that person dies by statute, uh, if there's an extra grave, their spouse gets to be buried there, right? No matter how much he or she disliked his spouse, she, he or she, they, that person gets to be buried there. You can't cut them up by will or anything like that, right? If there, are, if there continue to be extra graves, the children can use those extra graves. First come, first serve. First come, first serve. That's right. So um, if, once again, if you've, if you've actually got, if you're in that situation that you have bought a cemetery a long, you know, plot a long time ago and you think there may be these extra graves, especially if your children have moved away, it doesn't look like this is going to be necessary, you may want to talk that out ahead of time so you can figure all that stuff out. Okay? Um, finally, as, as a legal matter, there's a question of if you own this plot, it's got extra graves, so what, can, you, can, you, can you sell them? Can you do things with them? And the answer in all cases is, it's whatever the cemetery says, whatever the cemetery's rules are. I know one cemetery where you, if you have extra graves, you can, tr you can um, give them back to the cemetery and they'll pay you what you originally paid for that plot 50 years ago, right? They'll pay you $20 or whatever, right? There is another one that I saw that you can actually transfer them to other people, but their rule is that you can't transfer them for more than what you paid for them, okay? The, the, the point of this is to simply tell you whatever the cemetery says, that's the rule, with those exceptions that your spouse can be buried there and then after that it's the kids in no special order, okay? Um, yeah. One comment I would make is um, veterans are eligible to be buried in Massachusetts National uh -huh. Cemetery. Um, the veteran, the veteran spouse, and any dependent children, um, it's, it's a beautiful cemetery. It is. Where is that? That's in Bourne. In Bourne. Um, just off of 28. Oh, yeah. Um, so, and it's, it's quite the cost savings. Uh, you're not buying a grave. You're not purchasing, or you're not paying to have the grave dug. You're not paying for the grave liner. And you're not paying for the monument. Um, that being said, veterans are still eligible to be buried at private cemeteries. And some, some benefits do come along with that as well. The monument. Um, possibly burial benefits, but it depends on uh, certain criteria. But that's, that's an application that, I, that oftentimes we assist with. So. And that's an application I've never seen. So I can say, I can say nothing, <laughs> nothing to add to any of that. Okay. Any questions regarding burial plots? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So the question is, on their website, yeah. do they actually have that form, which is the, was it the F, the F, the know. federal form that has all of the different things regarding? I, I recommend really just talking to us um, because a form can be, I think, misunderstood sometimes. Oh, okay. So I think, I think the best thing to do is to talk to us and then we can email you or fax you um, certain things that you're looking for. Um, I, think, but I think best talking is, um, is the way to go about it. Um, I think things can get lost in translation with emails and, and that type of thing. So the trust doesn't come into play at all for, the, for your remains. You're saying so the trust the doesn't come into... You have a will and a trust. The, the trust should not come into play in any way. Okay. There, there's no, there's no governing power at all. You can't give the trustee power over your remains. Only the personal representative. Are you speaking of a prepaid funeral trust? I, don't, I think you were just talking about who's going to be in charge of the remains. Okay. Right? I think so because we're going to talk about prepaid just in a second. Yes, sir. So 